Lincoln does have a robust urban forestry program and we're joined today by John Saylor with our urban forestry program and John will take just a couple of minutes and talk about an important component of Lexington's tree canopy and, and that is our street trees and talk about who's responsible for maintaining street trees some tips maybe about planting trees but also more importantly tools and what you need to know about maintaining your street tree and I, I guess the first thing we'll talk about is that street trees are the responsibility of the property owner. Sure, yeah. Chapter 17B is what governs street trees. That's the, the ordinance for street trees. And uh, it puts the maintenance responsibility on the property owner. So that means um, any pruning, uh, if the tree dies, they need to be replaced and removed. And uh, all that falls on, on the property owner. And I guess one of the first steps is you need to install a street tree or remove a street tree. You need to contact you because a permit is required. Right. In our office, we, we give you a free permit, so it's just a matter of uh, applying for one. And um, you know, if, it's, if, it, if it's a green tree that's alive and healthy, we'll come out and assess and see if it, it needs to go. But uh, we do want to keep that canopy at maintain 25 and increase it. Um, but that's, that's a, a free permit that we give out of our office. With, the, with our street trees, we don't want uh, trees to be falling into the road, falling into the sidewalk, um, doing any damage. So we want to we want to maintain those trees. We want to have a, an understanding if there's a disease that comes through that you know a tree may need to take down emerald ash borer is, is taking out our ash trees, and uh, so people need to be aware of what's happening in, in the urban forest and, and what insects and pests that could be coming down uh, and, and affecting the trees. So we, we want to keep a, a close eye on, on those things and, and we're all always available to talk to citizens if they need to call and have questions and, and if their trees are, are sick or they think they, they may need some attention, uh, we'd be glad to come out and schedule an appointment and, and take a look at them. And, and looking at performing an assessment of the tree, I, I know we talk about kind of some, some basic elements, if you will, if you start at the bottom, kind of work your way up, what are the things that you're going to be looking for? Well, uh, on the roots, you want to see, especially when a tree is planted, what we see a lot of in town are these mulch volcanoes. And so basically what that tells me is the, the tree, uh, oftentimes a tree in, in the root ball is already deep. And um, you, want, you want a reputable contractor, if you are replacing a street tree, you want somebody that's going to plant that at grade level. And then you don't want the mulch volcanoes, you want it, um, you, you want it at grade and no more than two to three inches of mulch. You want that mulch to break down. That mulch is going to feed the tree. Uh, it's it's going to keep moisture on those roots. And uh, but but the, these these trees that have the the mounds of mulch. Um, that basically what happens is the, the mulch becomes hydrophobic. It doesn't absorb the water uh, that's needed for the tree. It basically sheds the water. There's a fungal mat that'll form and it'll just run right off. So. At the ground level, that, that's, those are key points as far as good maintenance tips for trees. Okay, and we start at the ground level, and now we're going to kind of move our way up the tree a little bit. What are the things you're going to be looking for? Well, on, on the stem, you know, we want to see, we want to make sure there's no cankers or, or any uh, borer activity from insects. And uh, we want to look that over and, and make sure it's free and clear. On some of these trees that are a thinner bark tree, in the winter, you may consider doing a wrap because uh, we'll have frost cracks. The, the February, uh, the Indians used to call February the month of the popping trees because that's when we would get, you know, we'd get up above freezing and then at night it would go below freezing and then uh, all the, the sap would be flowing through the tree and it would just start popping and crap, cracking as it would expand in, in the stem. So uh, a, a, a little tree wrap will kind of keep that from happening on some of these smoother bark trees that we have as uh, street trees. And moving on up where we've got the branches that are coming out? The branches, this is a great example of a young tree that could be pruned now for the future. Uh, it, it's always easier to take a smaller branch now and it, it's a smaller wound uh, that, that the tree has to overcome as, as compared to leaving this branch to go out into the sidewalk or on the street side onto the, onto the street to block the, we, we have a lot of, a lot of these streets, school buses come down, it's, it's hard for them to get 
through if, if the branches are out into the street. That's why we have 12 feet over the street and seven for pedestrians over the sidewalk. But if, if you look at, at branches that are heading that way now as on a young tree, it's easier to take that now than it is as, as it gets three or four inches in diameter. So that's, that's always good to look for the future and, and prune for those clearance heights as, as the tree is young. But also, you know, you, structurally, you wanna, you wanna take branches that are rubbing or crossing, you wanna remove those. You wanna take any dead wood. Some of this fine dead can go. Um, so th those are all things that I would be looking for as I'm looking at, at a tree. Um, you know, when I, and we're at, it's summertime, and so you can prune in the summer, but you don't wanna take as much as you would uh, normally. The general rule of thumb, you, you don't want to take more than a third of the tree's branches because basically the, the leaves are producing, th this is the food factory for the tree, that's what feeds the tree. So you, you don't want to go, you don't want to go crazy in the summertime. You can, you know, fall and actually late winter, early spring is the ideal time. You can prune trees year round, but you just have to know what you can get away with and what you can't. And in the summer, you would want to take less. Obviously, you can take dead wood any time. And let's, uh, let's take a moment and, and talk about maybe some of the tools that a homeowner may need if they're going to be doing some maintenance work on the tree. Sure, let me, let me grab my tools. And um, so we have, you know, you, we don't necessarily need a, a pull pruner on the smaller tree, but on some of the bigger trees, you know, especially the 12 foot side, um, getting that clearance, you may, may be interested in picking up a pull pruner or a pole saw. There's a pole pruner that's actually almost like a hand pruner that's attachment on a pole. And some of them, uh, this will cost around $150, but some of them will have the dual head where you can change out and have one that's a, a, a pole saw, one that's a pole pruner. Uh, on a tree like this, I'm just gonna have basically a hand saw and a hand pruner. Um, that's basically just taking these small branches uh, the little stubs, I want any stub off. Yeah, this is a dead piece, I'm gonna take it all the way back to the stem. And when we're pruning, you always wanna take, you don't wanna leave stubs. You don't wanna just indiscriminately go out and just take a cut. You wanna take it back to a lateral branch or something a third in its size. So you don't, you don't wanna just come here and oh, I need to clear and to prune this, I'm gonna cut it right there uh, and leave that stub. You wanna, you wanna make sure, because. You, you don't want, if you did that, then that's just gonna send the nutrients out to a void. There's nothing that's gonna go to with that stub. It's not gonna feed that tree. So you, you take it back to something that's gonna be alive and it's gonna, it's gonna send the flush of growth out to, uh, to this, this part that you leave. So a hand pruners, hand saw, you don't necessarily need one this expensive. You can pick, pick one up cheaper, but uh, basically a double serrated hand saw. And then also, um, just some whoppers, um, some long handled pruners. It's just similar to the, the hand pruner, just have a little bit more reach. And people who um, may not have a lot of experience uh, may say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure what I need to be doing with this. Where can they get information about maintaining their street trees? Sure, on our, on our website, you can go to lexingky.gov and go to urban forestry and we have um, there, a tab on street trees. Uh, you can check out our street tree ordinance on, on that um, page and you can also, we have diagrams on the proper pruning techniques. If you have bigger branches, you, you, you don't wanna just take one cut because you'll strip that, that wood into the stem. You wanna make three cuts, an undercut, and so there's, there's all that information on our website at lexingky.gov. Great. John, thanks for joining us. This concludes another edition of A Greener Bluegrass. Thank you for watching. If you want additional information about environmental programs in Lexington, go to livegreenlexington.com. You can visit our web pages there. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And as always, thank you for watching A Greener Bluegrass.